Good morning students. Today's class we will see about the congenital abnormalities of female reproductive system. The human female reproductive system contains two major parts that is the uterus which holds the developing fetus, produces vaginal and uterine secretions and passes of male sperm through the fallopian tubes and the ovaries which produce female egg cells. These parts are internal. The vagina meets the external origins and the vulva, which include labia, clitoris, and urethra. The vagina is attached to the uterus to the cervix, while uterus is attached to the ovaries via fallopian tubes. At certain intervals, the ovaries release an ovum, which is passed through the fallopian tube into the uterus. The internal reproductive organs include the vagina. The vagina is a small canal that joins the cervix to the outside of the body. It is also known as the birth canal. Uterus, otherwise known as the common man language, is the womb. The uterus is a hollow, pear-shaped organ that is the home to develop developing fetus. The uterus is divided into two parts, the cervix, which is the lower part that open into the vagina, and the main body of uterus called the corpus. The corpus can easily expand to hold the developing baby. A channel through the cervix allows sperm to enter and menstrual blood to exit. Ovaries. The ovaries are the small, oval-shaped glands that are located on either side of the uterus. The ovaries produce eggs and hormones. Fallopian tube. These are the narrow tubes that attach the upper part of the uterus and serve as a tunnel to travel from ovaries to the uterus. Conception. The fertilization of an egg by the sperm normally occurs in the fallopian tube. The fertilized egg then moves to the uterus where it implants into the lining of the uterine wall. Cervix. Cervix the lower part of the uterus that protrudes protru into the vaginal canal. has an orifice that allows passage of menstrual flow from for menstrual flow from the uterus and passage of sperm into the uterus. The perineal or vestibular anus. It is the defect at the time of birth. Usual anal opening site is evidenced by anus split. Either anus will be situated close to the posterior end of the vestibule or the, in the vestibule. The vagina rarely discontinuing the rectovaginal fistula. Opening is sufficiently big. If the future reproduction is not a problem, serine section advice in future. Ectopic ureter. In addition to ureteric opening, it is usually through the vestib vestibule close to the urethra in the vagina. Symptom is uncontrollable wetness. Peripheral nephrectomy and urethrectomy may indicate or implantation of ectopic urethra into the bladder may be done. Narrow endroitus. Revealed after marriage, this perineum may be the first complaint or it may be detected during the investigations of infertility. Treatment is effective by manual stretching under general anesthesia or by surgical enlargement. The hymen abnormality, imperforate hymen of significant subnormality, always not be unnoticed until 14 to 16 years of age. Uterine functioning is normal. Menstrual flow is when inside the vagina, behind in the hymen. Depending upon the amount of blood so accumulated, it first the distance the vagina. The uterus next involved in the cavity is dilated. If late and neglected, tubes may also distend after fimbrial ends becoming close to the adhesions. The clinical features, it is first seen in among 14 to 16 years of age. Periodic lower abdominal pain, which may be continuous, primary amenorrhea and urinary symptoms. On examination, abdominal examination shows suprapubic swelling. Vulvar inspection shows tense bulging membrane of bluish col coloration. Rectal examination shows bulge vagina. Treatment, curate incision is made in the hymen. Quadrants of hymen are partially excised and not close to the vaginal mucosa. Spontaneous escape of dark, tarry color blood is allowed. Patient should be made to lie down and the head and is raised. Septate vagina. Complete or incomplete longitudinal septum may be associated with a double uterus and double cervix. May be asymptomatic or may produce dyspareunia in the and it may obstruct delivery. Treatment is septum is to be excised. Abnormalities of the reproductive development abnormalities incurred during the embryogenesis may be acquired or during adulthood, sometimes during pregnancy. The embryogenesis of the reproductive tract. Failure of fusion of the two mullerian ducts lead to separate uterine forms. Failure of cavitation between them results some degree of persistent uterine septum. Uncommonly, there is cervical and vaginal duplication associated with the septate uterus. 
vagina forms between a urethra urogenital sinus and the mullerian tubercle by dissolution of a cell called between two structures dissolution starts at the hymen and it moves upward toward the cervix failure of this process associated with the persistence of cell cord vaginal agenesis is a result of either failed caudal migration of fused mullerian duct or incomplete cell cord resorption later may result in incomplete vaginal obstruction or if less severe partial persistence and vaginal septum so this is the difference between a normal uterus and underdeveloped organs in mrkh mrkh syndrome is meyer rodinsky coster hauser syndrome is a disorder that occurs in females and mainly affect the reproductive system this condition causes the vagina and the uterus to be underdeveloped or absent so the external genitalia will be normal genesis and the classification of mullerian abnormality defective canalization of vagina result in the transverse septum or in the most extreme form vaginal agenesis unilateral maturation of the mullerian duct with incomplete or absent development of the opposite duct result in the defect associated with upper urinary tract abnormalities the most common abnormality is absent of faulty midline fusion of the mullerian ducts So, American Fertility Association classification of Mullerian abnormalities divided into segmented Mullerian hyperplasia, uncoordinated unicornate uterus, uterine dis, dis, bicornate uterus, septate uterus, arcuate uterus, and die die either cell distal related. So, these classes are we can see one by one vulvar abnormalities, atresia, complete atresia of the vulva include atresia of the introitus and lower third of the vagina. In most cases, however, atresia is incomplete, result from a adhesion of scars following injury or infection. Deep perin, the defect may present considerable obstacle to the vaginal delivery. Deep perineal tears may present. Labial fusion, most commonly due to congenital adrenal hyperplasia, imperforate hymen that we have already seen. Vaginal abnormalities include vaginal agenesis, vaginal atresia, double vagina, longitudinal vaginal septum, and transverse vaginal septum. Obstetrical significance of vaginal abnormalities: complete Mullerian agenesis. Pregnancy is impossible because uterus and vagina is absent. About one third of women with vaginal atresia have associated <coughs> Sorry, urological abnormalities. A complete vaginal atresia precludes pregnancy by vaginal intercourse unless corrected operatively. Incomplete septum manifestation of faulty development or the or the result of scarring from injury or inflammation. In most cases, partial atresia because of pregnancy induced tissue softening obstruction during labor is gradually overcome interferes with descent. Complete longitudinal vaginal septum usually does not cause dystocia due because half of the vagina through which the fetus descend dilates satisfactorily. Incomplete septum, however, occasionally interferes with the descent. Upper the upper vagina is separated from the rest of the canal by a transverse septum with a small opening and some associated with the in utero exposure of diethyl cell bistrol. Cervical abnormalities, atresia, the cervix may be fail to develop this may combine incomplete development of upper vagina or lower uterus double cervix each distinct cervix result from separate mullerian duct maturation both separate and double true double cervix are frequently associated with the longitudinal vaginal septa many septate cervixes are in erroneously classified as double single hemi cervix septate cervix Obstetrical significance include uncorrected complete cervical atresia incompatible with natural conception. In 2001, the doctor had six successful pregnancies in four women with cervical atresia after creation of a utero-vagin anastomosis. Uterine malformation discovered by routine pelvic examination. Frequently, they discovered by cesarean delivery or first discovered at laparoscopy. Sonographic screening of uterine abnormalities. Sona Sonography can be used to differentiate septate and bicornate uterus. Hysteroscopy and hysterosalpingography are high means value in ascertaining the configuration of uterine cavity. MRI are necessary to de delineate the Mullerian duct anomalies and their extent. Accuracy is up to 100% in evaluation of Mullerian duct anomalies. 
urological defect asymmetrical report asymmetrical reproductive tract abnormalities are frequently associated with urinary tract anomalies when unilateral uterine atresia is present or when one side of the double vagina terminates blindly and epistatal urological anomaly is common auditory defects up to third of the women emulerian defects will have auditory defects typically these are sensor sensor neural hearing deficit in the high frequency range uterine anomalies in wimps tumor survivors there are rarely rare mal this rare malignancy appears to be associated with increased incidence of congenital urinary and reproductive tract anomalies this must be partially explained the increased rate of infertility reported in male female survivors obstetric significance the defects in the result from the development only one mullerian intact or from lack of fusion often give rise to a hemi uterus that fails to dilate and hypertrophy appropriately this result in miscarriage ectopic pregnancy rudimentary horn pregnancy preterm delivery fetal growth restriction abnormal fetal lie uterine dysfunction or uterine rupture two type of uterine anomalies resulting from mullerian duct fusion failures are by coronate uterus and uterus didipalus and unicornate uterus or class 2 women with unicornate uterus have increased incidence of infertility endometriosis and dysmenorrhea implantation in normal size hemi uterus is associated with increased incidence of spontaneous abortion preterm delivery intrauterine fetal demise class 2 Uterine dead face is the class three. This anomaly distinguished from bicornate and septate uterine by presence of, of a complete non-fusion of cervix and hemi uterine cavity. Except for ectopic and rudimentary horn pregnancies, problems associated with uterine dead face are the similar but frequent than those seen by cornate uterus. Class three, bicornate and septate uterus, class four and class five. Mark signs in miscarriage that is likely due to abdominal muscle tissue in the septum. Pregnancy loss in the first 20 weeks were reported from the case studies. 70 percentage of bicornate, 88 percent for septate uterus. Class four, five, and six is agram. arcuate uterus this malformation only mild deviation from the normally developed uterus manage women with non obstructive defects as uterine dead face and unicornate uterus usually do not need surgical correction although abnormal fetal presentation is common external cephalic version is likely to be successful circlage trans abnormal circlage may offer best prognosis for women with partial cervical atresia transvaginal circlage has been successfully in die Silvestrol exposed women with cervical hyperplasia. Metroplasty women with septate or bicornate anomalies and poor reproductive outcomes may benefit from uterine surgery. Repair of bicornate uterus is by transabdominal metroplasty involving septal resection and fundal recombination. Repair of a septate uterus is usually by means hysteroscopic septal resection. Die either silvestrol induced reproductive tract anomalies development of a rare vaginal clear cell adenocarcinoma increased risk of developing cervical intraepithelial neoplasia small cell cervical carcinoma vaginal adenosis non neoplastic structural abnormalities structural abnormalities include transverse septum circumferential ridges involving vagina and cervix cervical collar smaller uterine cavity shortened upper uterine segment t shape irregular oviduct abnormalities reproductive performance women exposed to des in utero in general have impaired conception rate possibly associated with the cervical hyperplasia and atresia their incidence of miscarriage ectopic pregnancy and preterm delivery are also increased trans generation anomalies genital tract anomalies have been described in offsprings of women exposed to die silvestrol when they are in the fetus acquired reproductive tract abnormalities include vulva abnormalities like edema inflammatory lesions bartholin duct lesions cysts of bartholin duct glands are usually sterile and do not need treatment during pregnancy if cysts are large enough to cause difficulty delivery then needle aspiration at temporary measure is sufficient abscess is present broad spectrum antimicrobials are given and drainage is established urethral and bladder lesions general Penal wards can also be extensive that vaginal delivery may be prohibited female genital mutilation 
vaginal abnormalities acquired vaginal abnormalities are uncommon even after major trauma long term sexual and reproductive function is normal vaginal stenosis may develop as a result of muco cystitis and graft versus host reaction following organ transplantation partial atresia incomplete atresia may result from infection or trauma that leads to extensive scarring during labor this is usually overcome by pressure from the presenting part by occasional incisions or even cesarean delivery may necessary genital tract fistulas vesica vagina fistula following a macron circular 20 weeks vesica uterine fistula that develop following vaginal delivery after prior cesarean delivery rarely anterior cervical lip is compressed against symphysis pubis and development of vesico cervical fistula severe cervical anomaly so the cervix and cervical stenosis is uncommon but it may follow cervical trauma such as colonization overall both surgical and laser colonization or loop excision of cervical intra epithelial neoplasia increase preterm delivery congenital cervix may undergo almost complete effacement without dilatation with presenting part separated from the vagina by only a thin layer of cervical tissue dilatation usually promptly follows pressure with the fingertip all the manual dilatation or cushion incisions may be required finally extensive surgical carcinoma may impair vaginal delivery uterine abnormalities like anti flexion exogenous degree of anti flexion frequent observed in early pregnancy are without significance mark anti flexion of enlarging pregnant uterus usually associated with diastase recti and pendulous subdomain the abnormal uterine position sometimes prevent proper transmission of contraction this is overcome by pre positioning with abdominal binder retroflexion the growing normally retroflex uterus remain incarcerated in a hole of sacrum symptoms include abdominal discomfort and inability to void normally uterine prolapse the cervix occasionally the portion of the body of the uterus may protrude for the variable extent from the vulva during early pregnancy the uterus persists in its prolapsed position symptoms of incarceration may develop from 10 to 10 to 14 weeks to prevent this uterus is replaced early in pregnancy and held in position with a suitable pessary tubal abnormalities in the tubes may be unduly elongated rarely tube may be absent on one side this ad may lower the fertility of favor ectopic pregnancy abnormalities of ovary there may be a streak of gonads or gonadal di digenesis which are usually associated with errors of sex chromosomal pattern no treatment will help this condition accessory ovary may present supranumerary ovary may present in the broad ligament or elsewhere thank you thank you for listening